Well, hello there. I'm host Camille Archese and welcome to Harlequin Books and Cooks. In each episode, I teach a popular romance novelist one of my favorite recipes while we chat about their careers and the books they love to write. Now, in my opinion, sexy novels and decadent desserts go hand in hand. So joining me today is the lovely Naima Simone and we're making my no-bake raspberry tiramisu. Stick around. Her books have been featured in the Washington Post and Entertainment Weekly. This USA Today best-selling author has been publishing her work for over 10 years now. Please join me in welcoming to the show, Naima Simone. Naima, it's so great to see you. Hi, it is wonderful to be here. How are you doing? Very, very good. Thank you. And yourself? I'm doing great. I can't complain. <laughs> well, you look fabulous. Well, thank you. I'm, I mean, I'm just trying to keep up with you. That's all I can do. You're kind. <laughs> <laughs> well, Naima, I really hope that you like desserts because we're making one of my favorite things today. I'm actually quite famous for my tiramisu, but I'm actually showing you a different version. So traditionally, tiramisu is an Italian dessert that is flavored with espresso and coffee liqueur and a little bit of cocoa powder. It's really rich, it's really decadent, it's great, but I thought it's warm out, how do I lighten it up for summer? So this is my raspberry tiramisu. So it has all the decadence, all the creamy richness that we love, but it's lightened up on the palate with the raspberries. Are you ready? I am super ready. Well, that's great because now you're gonna have a wicked dessert recipe that you can add to your repertoire. And this is gonna be something that I promise you, you're gonna be making a lot going forward. And there's ways that you can tweak the flavors as well. So it doesn't just have to be raspberry. We can do different versions, but this is a really good foundation. You're gonna need some type of dish to put the tiramisu in. So I'm using a nine by 13 baking dish. But traditionally, a lot of Italians will make this in something like a wide, low, shallow bowl. And it's really simple. They just put it in the center of the table and people scoop it out. So that's another way to do it. It doesn't have to be like one of these casserole-like dishes. Another way you could serve this is also putting it into individual little cups and servings. So, you know, use what you have when you're making this. In terms of ingredients, we have, of course, the Italian lady fingers. We're gonna need some sugar, some mascarpone cheese. We've got some fresh oranges, some salt, vanilla, and of course, raspberries. Am I right? I have everything. Perfect. So Naima, do you do much cooking or baking at home? Oh, most definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> well, then you're in I the mean, right place. I mean, does Toll House count? Because if Toll House counts, totally. Yeah, I'm a master at that. Well, the good thing is I'm going to be giving you a wicked dessert recipe that you can add to your repertoire. And you can also adapt it as your taste kind of changes. So don't worry, you're in good hands. Okay, great. I, then I'm totally ready. Let's, let's totally knock this out. Okay, well, I, have, I do have a question about substitutions. Can, instead of raspberry, could we use strawberry? Because I love strawberries. So yeah, could strawberry, we use that? Absolutely. Strawberry would be really good. Um, lemon is another great option. I've actually Ooh. had friends do this recipe, but swap the raspberry puree for lemon juice and then lemon zest. So that works really, really well. So let's get started with the raspberry puree. This is gonna be the color and a big flavor component of this raspberry tiramisu. So to get it started, it's very simple. We're just gonna add all the uh, puree ingredients to the blender and we're gonna blend it until it's smooth. So. Okay. I'm gonna put into my blender, I'm gonna add the raspberries. Okay. Okay. And it's, uh, how many, do you have two of those containers? I do. Perfect. So put two of those into your blender. Okay. And then we need a third of a cup of sugar. Okay. Okay, so you got your sugar. Let's add a pinch of salt. Okay. And then we need a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. I'm just pouring right in because in my opinion, vanilla is always welcome to the party, so. 
Okay, because I'm going to like a capful is like a teaspoon, right? Perfect. I love it. You're okay. already all comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind I'm like the measuring spoons. I'm making up spoons. my own measurement. <laughs> Just throw the measuring spoons away. It's fine. And now we have to make some noise and get this all nice and smooth. Okay, this is like my favorite part. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. It's your rating. Small victories, small victories. You go, Blender. So that looks nice and smooth. You can stop there. <laughs> awesome. And now we just have to strain our puree. Okay. So grab a bowl and a mesh sieve and you pour this gorgeous puree right over top. And already I'm just swooning because the color of raspberries is just so gorgeous. Wow, I did it. <laughs> I right? feel so accomplished. So Naima, you write sexy, dramatic romance stories for Harlequin Desire, but now you have a small town series called The Road to Rosebend. I'm curious to know, do you, do you have a preference for which types of romance you like and what is your favorite component or element of each type of romance? I actually don't have a preference. I enjoy, really enjoy writing both. Um, I can switch up. I love writing small town romances because, you know, like the whole community and small town feel of it with family. Both are still very much hot because I, I just love writing hot books. But you have like the small town feel of it with family and community. And then you have like the, the drama and the glamour of the big city books. But both always have that element of just love and romance and they're both very much character driven and just, you know, relationship. And all of my books tend to have that theme of healing and overcoming some kind of um, drama and past and, you know, trauma for, for both the hero and the heroine, which I love having them overcome and bring them together and, you know, seeing love overcome for both of them. So that's the common theme and element that runs through both of them. But the settings are very much different, which kind of lets me just dip in and delve into just different worlds, which gives me a breather from both of them. So I just love writing in both worlds. I love that. I know what you mean. It's like when people ask me, what do I love to cook? It's like, today is raspberry tiramisu, tomorrow it's pasta, the next day it's gonna be something Middle Eastern. It's kind of all exactly. over the place and there's room for all and some days you want a little of this and some days you want a little bit of that. All right, Naima, let's get started by whipping the mascarpone cheese. So we okay. need 300 grams of mascarpone cheese, which is a rich Italian cream cheese type thing. And okay. we're gonna put that into our bowl. I'm using a stand mixer. So I need 300 grams. So, you okay. know, you've got that package. I think your package will be the whole thing, pretty much. Okay. And then we wanna add to the bowl another third of a cup of sugar and another teaspoon of vanilla. Yes, more sugar. <laughs> so we're doing this because, as you can see, the mascarpone cheese is really dense. And if you were gonna <laughs> spread this over the cookies without lightening it up, without whipping it a little bit, it's not gonna spread really well, and it's not gonna give you that really nice light you know, airy mouthfeel. So this is an important step. When you're ready, we'll turn on our mixer. So we wanna get it light and airy. Okay. Okay? I'm kind of scared. Okay. No, don't worry. Just keep it All submerged right. under the cream so it doesn't fly up. Yeah. Okay, good, good point. Okay, <laughs> all right. Here I go. Okay, all right. Not bad. I'm doing it. <laughs> Yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> Pause mixing and then use a spoon or a rubber spatula, whatever you have, and scrape the sides of the bowl. So you're kind of bringing everything back to the center. So that makes sure that it really gets all incorporated. And then once you scrape, just put it back on for another 10 seconds 
to mix again. So you can stop there if it's nice and smooth. Okay, because I feel like I'm making a hot mess. <laughs> so let's transfer that to another bowl or okay. you can use another bowl if you have to whip the cream. So Rosebend is a small town series, but then mm -hmm. your Billionaires of Boston is set in a big city. So are you a city girl or are you a country girl? This is what I want to know. I was born in a small town, mm -hmm. but it's kind of hard. It, it's right outside of a big town because it's outside of Newark, which is basically like 20 minutes outside of New York City. So it, it has a small town feel, but it very much is outside of a big city. So I love the small town feel. Mm -hmm. If I had my choice, I would totally live in a Thomas Kincaid painting. But I kind of, you know, I love big town attractions. Mm -hmm. Like I love theater. I love uh, the mall as long as I don't have to stay in it all day. I love, you know, I, I love things like that, but I would love to live in a small town, which probably explains why I love to write in both worlds. That's, that's awesome. And you know what? Your books are a great way to kind of scratch both itches, you know? So keep, keep them coming. It's working. Yeah. It's really working. <laughs> Let's move on to whipping the cream. Okay? Yes. Okay. It's really I'm ready. simple. Just put your nice cold whipping cream into your bowl. And then you're okay. going to use your new toy, that awesome <laughs> electric mixer you have. And we're going to whip it until it's stiff peaks. But one thing, put it in the cream first and put it okay. on low speed. Okay. And then once it starts getting bubbling, once you start okay. seeing little bubbles start to form, then you're gonna slowly increase the speed. I'm doing it. Okay. Gradual speed. Okay, I'm gonna turn up my speed. You look like a pro, Naima, wow. So this is, how you kind of give your descriptor. Like when you see a recipe say soft peaks, whip to soft peaks or whip to stiff peaks, it's talking about what it looks like when you hold up your uh, whisk. So this is a stiff peak because it holds its shape. The next step is to incorporate the whipped cream into the mascarpone cheese. We're gonna do this in two additions. So we'll go half of the whipped cream, fold it in, and then the other half. You're going to use your rubber spatula and we're going to do a really, really technical term called folding. Okay. So that means that you're going to take your rubber spatula and you're going to start incorporating it very gently into the mascarpone because this is, this is where we're adding something light into something heavy. So we want to make it all uniform now. Drag your spatula in the middle of the bowl okay. and then turn it so that you're kind of bringing what's on the bottom to the top. And once it's pretty uniform in its appearance, then you're gonna add the rest of the whipping cream. So Naima, I noticed that you've written in a few different romance subgenres, including paranormal and contemporary. What authors do you recommend in those other genres, maybe for other readers to check out? Oh, I have so many, cause I love to read across genre, so I would totally recommend Nalini Singh, first and foremost. And she writes across genre. She is a phenomenal um, paranormal romance writer. She also writes amazing contemporary. Um, I adore Tessa Bailey. She writes fantastic uh, romantic comedy and romantic suspense and contemporary. I adore um, Lloyd Foster. I've read her since I was a kid and she still writes totally amazing books. I love Reese Ryan. Um, she writes for Harlequin Desire as well. Uh, Adriana Herrera, she is completely amazing. Uh, Laquette, um, I, there, there are just so, 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 so many. Stacey Reed, Grace Calloway for historical romance. Oh, because I cut my teeth on historical romance books. So, yeah, I used to steal my mother historical romance books. Uh, yeah, she was totally slipping on that. So, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. so there are just so many wonderful authors out there. 
Let's get the raspberry incorporated now. We're going to take half of this whipped cream and mascarpone mixture and add it to the second bowl. And then we're gonna combine that with the raspberry puree that we made earlier. So I'm gonna pour this raspberry all over mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing it. I secretly, I would love to just be alone with a bowl of this raspberry puree and a spoon. I, I wouldn't even share it with the family. <laughs> <laughs> Once okay. again, Naima, we're going to fold to incorporate the raspberry into the cream. Okay. I'm like an expert folder here. You are. So the secret to this tiramisu, well, to any tiramisu really, is that we soften the cookies and turn them into a cake-like texture. That happens because we're gonna dip them in some orange juice and then it's gonna be sandwiched in between layers of the cream. So overnight, that's gonna soak in and soften the cookies and turn them into a cake, basically. So I already okay. have a little bit of orange juice that I've already squeezed just in the interest of time. But okay. we need some zest and we need the juice. So here's okay. the thing with zesting any type of citrus. You always have to get the zest before you squeeze it for juice. Take your orange, we want the zest from half of it. So the trick okay. with the getting the zest is that you don't want to go too far. You just want to rub it once, like pass it over the microplane once, and then once you see the lighter part on the inside, that's as far as you want to go because the white part of the orange is bitter. Give it one swipe and then you turn. Uh -huh. And then one okay. swipe and then you turn. Okay. Yeah. One swipe and then you turn. So we need a Got cup it. and a half of fresh orange juice. Let's say, because every orange has a different volume, let's say you ran out of fresh oranges. It's not the end of the world if you have to use like a good quality bottled orange juice, so don't sweat it. Okay. We need to start layering the ladyfinger cookies. So what we're gonna do is take them one uh -huh. by one, and we kind of have to work a little bit quickly, is you're gonna okay. just dip it both sides, a little submersion into the orange juice mixture, and then we're gonna start layering them all along the bottom of our dish. Does it matter what direction or? No. It okay. doesn't matter at all. Got gotcha. you. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna notice we're gonna have to break some of the cookies to make them fit. It's a very forgiving dessert. So typically with this recipe, I would add to this orange juice mixture some rum as well as an orange liqueur, just for that little yes. pop of flavor because it goes really well. But my six-year-old niece Ava is visiting right now, so I'm not gonna be able to have this in the fridge and not share this with her, so I'm gonna skip the alcohol for today. So you can make it kid-friendly as well. Next yep. thing we're okay. gonna do is we're gonna spoon over some of the cream. Now, I like to go raspberry on the bottom, just the raspberry okay. mixture, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna do little dollops like all over, and then it's gonna make it okay. much easier to spread. Got you. And while we do that, Naima, I'm wondering, in your stories with your characters, what, how much of yourself, whether it's your experiences or, you know, just things that really, how, well, how much of yourself is in your books? I, I think a lot of authors, and I don't want to speak for um, all of us, but I think a lot of authors put ourselves in, in our books, whether it's you know, just like a lot of our preferences, like for me, for instance, I am a child of the 80s, so a bunch of 80s references, like whether it's movies, um, I love Lord of the Rings, so it's gonna be a ton of Lord of the Rings references. Um, it, so a lot of that, you know, we put a lot of ourselves as far as our hobbies into it, you know, and even with, with our heroine, with our heroines, you know, some things with our issues, you know, with um, self-esteem, with things we would love to see ourselves overcome, you know, with heroines, with um, body images, you know, we, with body images issues, you know, we, we put a lot of ourselves like that into, we want to see women win, you know, and so 
we, we write that into it because we, we want to see that in, in our heroines. We want to see that in our books. So I think we, we do that for, for each other. We do that for our readers. And I just don't think we can help it. We don't write our biographies, you know what I mean? Our autobiographies, we don't do that. But we just can't help it. That must be almost therapeutic to kind of release certain things and work through them through your characters. So that's awesome. Absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. To see, to see the heroine overcome and to realize that, you know, she is not, she is not her body, but that she's owning her, her, her curve. She's owning her sexuality. She's owning herself and that she's more than her weight, but she's not loved in spite of it but because of it is a very empowering thing. I definitely picked up on that reading your books and really loved that actually. So yeah. thank you for writing those characters. It's really great. Yeah, thank you. So Naima, let's get started with the second layer of lady fingers. Just like we did the first time, dip and arrange on top of the cream. And while we assemble Naima, what can, what can your readers and I look out for next from you? Well, I have the second book in the Billionaires of Boston series coming out. That is Secrets of a One Night Stand. It's a bit of a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I'm so excited about that. Of course, The Road to Rose Bend um, came out already. That is my small town romance book. So excited about that as well. <laughs> and of course, I have um, Christmas in Rose Bend, which is the second book in the Rose Bend series. That is um, Wolf's book, which is the second brother in the Denison family. And that is a holiday book. Listen, Secrets of a One Night Stand. Really, really enjoying that one. Very well Thank done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna add my second layer of the cream. And that is just, you're gonna use all of it and spoon it over top of the cookies once again. So now we're literally creating a beautiful lady finger layer cake with no baking, no cooking, just a little mixing. This is like my favorite kind of cooking ever. No baking, no cooking. So once you put your second layer of cream on top, just okay. spread it so that you're covering all the cookies. And that's it. You would just cover Yay. this and put it in the fridge for four hours to overnight. And that is your raspberry tiramisu. <laughs> I did it. You did okay, it. Okay, Camille, you are a miracle worker. <laughs> <laughs> Naima, typically we would let this rest in the fridge four hours to overnight and let the cookies really soften but I don't have patience for that and I don't think you do either, right? I do not. <laughs> right. So the cookies are gonna be a little on the crunchier side right now, but we just wanna get those flavors. So find a corner, take a nice scoop, and let's give it a try. Okay, okay. It's gonna fall apart a little bit in that zone, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Good things are messy sometimes. Going in, let's go. I'm going in. <laughs> I'm really good at this. I'm so doggone good at this right? big thing. Just a handful of simple ingredients. My goodness. That's all it takes. And we didn't even let the cookie soften and look how good that is. Wow. <laughs> Naima, how do you feel about the recipe? Is this something you're gonna make again? This is how I feel about the recipe. Oh yeah. <laughs> This is fantastic. I will so make this again. Thank you so much for joining me, Naima. You did such oh. a great job. Thank you. All right. You're a miracle worker. <laughs> I'd like to thank our guest, Naima Simone, who made her own incredible version of my raspberry tiramisu. Be sure to check out her latest titles, The Road to Rosebend and Secrets of a One Night Stand. You do not want to miss out on those.